Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to do a video here because I have seen a lot of stuff on forums and threads and comments on my videos and Instagram posts about the wiring on a chopper and how I did the wiring on this bike and tips and tricks and I've, I've sent a lot of messages to a lot of people recently and so I figured hey it might be an easier to do to do a video walk through what I did and uh, be able to send the link to the video to them so um, here goes let's let's dive into exactly how I wired this chopper so first things first um, side note this bike is a 1971 Harley Davidson Sportster 900 it is a uh, 12 volt battery system. This is electric start. It originally did come with a kick start as well, but this bike does not have that installed. So this is operating on electric start only. Um, standard spark plug configuration, we'll get to that later. Standard points ignition, we'll get to that later. Um, but that's the basics of, of what bike I'm running. If yours is different, obviously you're going to have to check your manual uh, to see, but this is a pretty common application for electrical and power and wiring and ignition. So that's the first thing first out of the way. The second thing second is above all else above all else you gotta draw yourself a diagram and so there's hundreds of diagrams online. Some of them are really good and some of them are absolute garbage. Um, I pulled a bunch of them all together and kinda made one that worked for me so uh, it looks a little something like this I'll zoom in on it in, in a minute, don't worry. Um, but it's always good to have a diagram to start from. I began with the full wiring diagram from the service manual uh, and I brought it into AutoCAD uh, and started to redraw it. And as I redrew it, I kind of learned how the engineers designed the original electrical system for these bikes. And, and from there, just started taking off one thing at a time. So I take off the speedometer power and wiring and take off the tack and take off the turn signals until I was done with just the core setup. Then I went about drawing my own diagram based on what I had learned from seeing that. So here's what it looks like. I'll switch the camera around here and give you a look at, at the diagram that I drew. So again, I, I was able to do this in CAD, but you can do it by hand as well, all the same. I wanted to do it over a photo. If you notice in the background, there's a very light photo of the original bike, the bike that I had, as it looked when I bought it. And I started to lay out, okay, what's the critical thing? So obviously tail light is going to go in back, headlight is going to go up front. Um, I knew the battery was going to go here. I knew I wanted to do a, some sort of a switch box, which I ended up doing right there. Um, then you have all of your other components. So let's let's go through these real quick. Obviously, it has a headlights up front. Um, but let's zoom in on this a little bit and learn what we got. So this bike, as I said, is a uh, points ignition system. That's right behind that cover there. It's a mechanical system that opens and closes. Works with a capacitor to send a signal back to the coil to tell the spark plugs when to fire. So that's all right in there. Some bikes, more recently, will have a Dyna S style ignition where less components is still technically a points system um, but it's a little bit more fail safe and a little bit easier to set up some bikes will be upgraded to a full digital electronic ignition system which when you open this up there's like a little computer circuit board in there so uh, those things will trigger some other stuff that we'll get to in a minute but for mine it was a standard points system so that's what this is down below you see this little number 20 that is the oil pressure switch that's that guy right down there. Up from there we have the generator. This is a, a generator bike as far as the charging system. And on this bike, um, the generator is right there. And on this one I have one of the cycle electric regulators. So not only does the generator produce current that goes back and charges the battery, but a regulator is always in the loop somewhere to make sure that that current flow stays constant um, so that it doesn't spike or dip or dive Mine is right on the end of the generator and they're kind of wired together. Your bike, the regulator might be separate. Sportsters are known for having them kind of mounted on the front of the frame there. If they're together, life is easier. So for me, um, they were together, uh, less wiring. It's all kind of internal in the housing. This up here, number 17, is the coil. That's what the spark plug wires plug into. I'll go over to the other side of the bike in just a sec. 
Up from there, 24 and 26 are some warning lights. I'll show you those in a moment. And number six is my high beam switch. So that's all kind of accessory type lighting and power wiring. Um, obviously, like I said, headlights up front. Come back to the bottom, number 13. 13 is your starter motor. That's what actually spins and causes the engine to turn over. That's this big guy right, focus, right here. And then right beside it, this guy is the starter solenoid. That's number 14. The starter solenoid, if you don't know, is basically a switch. Power comes in, power goes out, and there's another lead that tells that solenoid when to uh, close, when to make contact, and it and it causes a couple things to happen, to be honest. For one, it sends power to the starter, but it also engages uh, a shaft, which, which triggers a set of gears back in the transmission there to, to enact and kind of engage in the clutch hub and cause the engine to spin. These two have to work in conjunction to start the bike. Um, so we'll get to that in just a moment. You can ignore this guy right here. This is the motor mount on the back of the Sportster case. Um, when I show you the routing of the wires that I did, um, you'll see why that's important to show on my diagram because I wanted to know what I'd have to work around to know my routing and path and how to get from point A to point B. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that was in there. Then obviously the housing. So in the housing is the key switch. I'll go around the other bike and sh other side of the bike and show you. For this one, I did a four position key switch where it's you slide the key in. Turning it one way goes to accessory, just like a car. You go back to center, go the opposite direction, and it goes to accessory and ignition. That puts power to the coil and to uh, the points and gets everything ready. Power to the solenoid will come in the fourth position, which is spring-loaded, just like a car, just like an automobile. Some bikes, you might have a three-position switch where it's just click, click, click. And then in that case, you would have a separate push button uh, spring-loaded push-button starter switch. Um, I wanted it simpler, cleaner, so I did it all in one. Beyond the switch, inside this housing is a 30 amp circuit breaker. That's really important. Well, I'll get to that. And then some smaller fuses. Um, I believe I ran a uh, 20 amp fuse for the um, ignition circuits and a 15 amp fuse for all of the accessory lighting uh, circuits. Obviously, then the battery is back number 15. And all these numbers, by the way, are just the numbers that the factory manual coded with these parts and pieces. I didn't make these up. Um, battery, this is the rear brake light switch. Right now, I'm running one of the cheapo um, pull string type switches. I want to replace that. Um, I wanted to do a, a button type switch down in underneath that's hooked to all the brake, lo uh, the brake linkage the way it was intended to be. I ran out of time before the bike shows and I had to do something so I just wired it in this way. Um, but that's actually the switch so when the rear brake rod is pulled forward by the pedal, um, it pulls on this spring, it pulls this out, connects the circuit, which then sends power up under the fender and to the tail light. So more on that later, but that's, that is the rear brake switch. And then of course the tail light. So that's my components. And you can see just overall, if I can get it all on the screen here, you can kind of see how it all comes together. Now, coding wise too, I'm, I'm a big planner. I like to know exactly what, what's going to go on before I first actually touch it. So all these dash lines are wires that are inside the frame rails. The solid lines are any wiring that is outside the frame tube. So you can see down here, I had to jump. I had to jump from this bottom frame rail, exposed, and then go up on to, up into the seat post, which is actually here. You can see right here, I have a, a hole planned in the frame. I jumped out of that to come up through the cam cover case, actually, into the points. And then same up here. Now, I had to do some kind of modification on the fly, because what I found out was that the... Um, the front motor mounts, these slugs here actually uh, prohibit any any wires from passing through the frame tube right there. It's solid. Um, so I knew I wanted to get a wire from the rear brake, I'm sorry, from the oil pressure switch from there up into this frame tube, this front down tube. So I had to <laughs> kind of just come up with something creative and I ended up just heat shrink tubing it 
um, and wrapping it around the frame and then it dives right into the frame in a hole right here to come up. So that's what you're kind of seeing there. I had to kind of improvise on the fly for the generator power wiring and the brake light switch wiring. Or, I'm sorry, the oil, I keep saying that. The oil pressure switch wiring. So I like to have all these kind of things planned out so I know exactly what holes to drill in the frame because obviously this frame had to go to powder coat before um, before I did all the wiring and I wanted all the holes either drilled or plugged. I didn't want a whole bunch of random holes um, just all over the place. Uh, so we, uh, we had to weld up all the empty old holes from the previous owner and have a specific set of holes drilled for just this purpose so that when it's all done and, and built, the frame is as clean as possible and the wiring is cleaning as clean as possible. So I mentioned in the wiring diagram, and I wanted to show you over here before I end this video, um, this is kind of the hub central processing unit, so to speak, for a lot of a lot of stuff. There's a lot of things going on back in there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, a lot of wiring. So what we have here, this is the coil. So this gets constant power in, hot from the battery, and then another feed from the points, from the ignition on the other side. This is what, what stores power and builds up power to be able to short circuit and end up send, sending a spark through the spark plug wires into the spark plug, which grounds itself out to the head. So this coil is very important. Um, that's mounted here. That's two wires going back. These two warning lights are for uh, the two, either the oil or the generator. So this back one, if the oil pump stops pumping at, a, at, a, at an appropriate volume, if it stops working, this back red light will light up. And if I put the key in, I'll go grab the key here for the next video. If I put the key in and just turn it to accessory, this red light lights up because there's no oil pumping. Um, so that's another two wires. This front one is the generator. If the generator stops producing adequate current to recharge the battery, this guy will light up. And then last is my high beam switch. So this is just a simple toggle switch, but it has a little blue dot indicator. Um, kind of cool when it lights up. So that one actually, <laughs> because of the style that it is, um, I believe this one actually has four wires coming from it. Hot in, hot out, hot and high beam out, and then a ground. And so I was able to feed just one hot to it, but then had to take two hots up to the headlight and then of course the ground out. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, ten wires. Ten wires out of just these components here that all had to be hooked up together behind there and then fed up through. You can kind of see them here. Let me see. In these bundles, shrink tubed up into... Oh, I got some color peeking out. That's no good. I thought I had the shrink tube all the way up into the hole. Um, up into those two holes and in through the frame either going up up this way to the headlight or you know up through the frame and then down through the frame tubes to the front stuff or to the back which comes to this hub here which again has the circuit breaker two fuses and then the massive key switch uh, deal so that's that's the overall setup um, wanted to give you an overview first so I'm going to stop it here. The next video, I'm going to go into an actual breakdown of how the engineering on this works. So what makes what tick? So if you're going to do something similar to this and you want to modify it, you can for your own bike. Once you uh, see the next video, you'll know everything there is to know about setting up a chopper wiring diagram. Again, I'm not running turn signals. I'm not running a speedometer, a um, whole bunch of extra stuff. Obviously, I have no tack on it. Um, this is a basic, basic chopper wiring diagram, but I've been running this for a few months now and it works like a charm. Uh, charges well, runs well, it's clean, it's simple, no shorts, very basic setup. Let me show you in the next video exactly how I did the rest of it. Cheers.